step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart and only Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Things all so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all full of sick became poor. Here I Sunday service. Today is All Saints Day and throughout our service we're going to be hearing from members of our congregation about their favourite saints. For me, at this time of year especially, I think of all those who've given up their lives for others over the years and throughout many wars. To me, they are all saints. We're going to hear about our first two saints, and then after that, we're going to sing a song, The King of My Heart. Please join in at home. Hello. When I was asked who my favorite saint was, um, this person came immediately to mind, Mother Teresa. Uh, I think because she lived during my own lifetime, um, she's more, accessible, more real to me um, than many of the saints that we, we read about, although I, I have no doubt that they lived and did all the things that, that we know they did. Um, but Mother Teresa shows us how to live a life like Christ calls us to in the modern times, and I found many of her words very inspiring, especially these ones. People are often unreasonable, irrational and self-centred. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. Do th the good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Mother Teresa. My family keep a few chickens. Recently I wondered, is there a patron saint of chicken keepers? The answer is yes, St Bridget of Ireland. St Bridget was born in Ireland in 450 AD. Her father was a pagan chieftain and her mother was a Christian slave. St Bridget was born a slave and while growing up she cooked, cleaned, washed and tended the animals on her father's farm. She was known for a remarkable generosity towards the poor, giving away food, explaining that Christ is in the person of every poor person who believes. I find it hard to deny Christ his own food. She had heard St Patrick preaching and wanted to work with the sick and poor. She entered the convent of St Machael, making her vows to dedicate her life to God. News of her good work spread 
and she founded many convents throughout Ireland. The most famous is Kildare, founded in 470 AD. Because of her work in spreading the faith in Ireland, St Bridget has been named co-patron of Saint of Ireland, along with St Patrick. She died in Kildare in 525 AD at the age of 75. Her feast day is celebrated on February the 1st, the anniversary of her death. was a noble lady from Rome who suffered martyrdom around 230 AD. Cecilia is the patron saint of musicians and church music because as she was dying she sang to God. It is also written that as the musicians played at her wedding she sang in her heart to the Lord. I've chosen Cecilia the patron saint of musicians, because since moving to Polstead, I've sung and played recorder and guitar in several church groups. Of latter years, I joined the Hadley Orchestra, still playing the recorder, but was moved, I believe by God, to learn to play the oboe. This instrument, Hadley Orchestra, first service, evening praise, have been a great joy beyond measure in my life. Cecilia was a fascinating woman, many interesting tales. Do check her out. Thank you. Saint Kenneth, a sixth century Welsh saint. He comes from South Wales, our homeland. He was a Christian hermit on the Gower Peninsula where he is credited with the foundation of the church at Langenna. He was disabled. When he was born, Kenneth was placed in a willow cradle and cast into the estuary of the River Lafore and eventually landed on Worm's Head. Seagulls and angels with a miraculous breast-shaped bell ensured that he survived 
and he was educated as a Christian. He became a hermit. In 545, Saint David cured Kenneth while travelling to the Synod of Brefai, but he preferred to remain as he was born and prayed for his infirmity to be restored. Kenneth was a son of Gildas. He married and had a son before entering Laniltud IV as a monk under Saint Iltud. The son, Saint Philly, was said to be the namesake of Carefilly. As a saint, he has a dedicated feast day. Kenneth's feast day is celebrated at Langeneth on the 5th of July. Up until the early 20th century, the festival was traditionally marked by the displaying of an effigy of a bird from a pole on the church tower, symbolising the legendary birds who cared for the infant, Kenneth. The Gospel reading is from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets, who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Our next hymn is Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see T'was grace that sought my heart to my fears relieve. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, 
Christopher is one of the 14 Holy Helpers and is known as the patron saint of travellers. I wear a St Christopher necklace to keep me safe when I'm away from home at university. Our little church at Leavenheath is dedicated to St Matthew. I thought I would see what I could find out about him. However, it turned out that very little is known about St Matthew, except that he was born the son of Alpheus and he was likely born in Galilee. He worked as a tax collector, which was a hated profession during the time of Christ. He was a Jew working for the Romans, who were the invaders and oppressors. He would have been considered a traitor. Also, tax collectors had a reputation for helping themselves to some of the taxes that they levied. And remember, it was a cash society. Alternatively, they were open to bribery not to charge the full amount of taxes due. A real sinner. According to the Gospel, Matthew was working at a collection booth in Capernaum when Christ came to him and asked, Follow me. With this simple call, Matthew became a disciple of Christ. His life was completely changed. After his call, Matthew invited Jesus home for a feast. On seeing this, the Pharisees criticised Christ for eating with tax collectors and sinners. This prompted Jesus to answer, I came not to call the righteous, but to, for sinners to repent. Matthew would have been one of the twelve who partook of the Last Supper with Jesus. Also, he was one of the witnesses to the ascension of Jesus. He is credited with being one of the four evangelistic disciples. And of course, it is believed that he wrote the Gospel according to St Matthew, the first Gospel of the Bible. What wonderful things he must have witnessed. And so we come to a time of prayer. Lord, you sent your Son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to captives, and salvation to your people. By your Spirit, Father, rouse us to work in his name. We pray for this world of ours. Lord, may the appetite for wealth and wars which we continue to see consume so much of our world be replaced with your justice and raise up peacemakers, we pray. We pray that our national and local government leaders and decision makers might selflessly do so with wisdom, clarity and compassion. Father, we pray that a vaccine might be found for the COVID-19 pandemic that so affects the well-being of us all. Bring your comfort and peace of mind to all those facing uncertain futures and your healing to all those suffering the bodily and mental effects of the disease. Grant fortitude and strength in the coming months to all those who work in the NHS and the various caring professions or simply caring for a loved one at home. We pray Lord for our community here in Leavenheath. Make your home among us dwell with us in this place. Let it be a place of refuge, comfort and safety for all. And we pray for those we know and love. Soothe those who are suffering, comfort those who mourn. Let us be glad and rejoice in the gift of your salvation. As you sustained your saints through centuries of service, keep us faithful here and now until your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our next worship song is This I Believe. to commit her life to prayer and chastity, but as a 7th century princess, she was given away in two arranged marriages. On the first occasion, she was widowed after three years. Ethelreda's second marriage was to the son of King Oswy of Northumberland. He released her from the marriage and she took the veil, becoming a nun in Coldingham in Scotland. In retirement, Ethelreda moved back to East Anglia and in 672 
she founded a religious house at Ely for both women and men. She presided over it until her death. Ethelreda died on the 23rd of June, 678, and her shrine at Ely Cathedral became a pilgrimage centre where many marvels are attributed to her intercessions. At her death, she was revered as a woman of austerity, prayer and prophecy. Ethelreda was probably the most revered of all the Anglo-Saxon women saints, judging from the, num from the numerous churches that are dedicated in her honour and the number of calendars containing her name. In the prayer written for her day, we pray, grant that we, like her, may live our lives on earth, seeking your kingdom. Amen. I'm a massive fan of musical theatre, and this year has been incredibly difficult for theatres, so I've decided to look at the patron saint of musical theatre. Saint Genesius of Rome was a comedian and actor who performed in plays that mock Christianity. According to the legend, it is believed that during a play in which they were mocking baptism, that Genesius had an experience on stage that converted him. He proclaimed his belief and refused to renounce it, even when the emperor ordered him to do so and then had him killed. It was believed that he was converted and killed for it. After death, he was then made the patron saint of actors. I personally feel this is a saint who we need to remember, especially during this difficult economic time as many theatres across the world are unable to open. The West End in London has lost £798 million and Broadway has lost $1.83 billion. Thank you. The next song will be Speak, O Lord. Truth planted deep 
When one thinks of All Saints Day, one thinks of literally all the hundreds of saints. However, I am going to talk about St Anthony of Padua because I know I have a very special relationship in my heart with him. My husband has downloaded from Wikipedia such an interesting article on St Anthony's life which has been so illuminating for me and you to read. St Anthony is the patron saint of lost items, but so much more for me. If I mislay something or Robert does, my first thought is to pray to St Anthony for help in finding the item, and the very next thing we find is the article. If we need to locate a place to go, I am inspired where to look. If I need a parking space and it is very busy, a car pulls out and in we go. Never fails. Robert is constantly incredulous, but he is slowly beginning to believe in prayerful request to St Anthony. At night times, I ask St Anthony to bring the cat home so we can all go to bed. He is not there when I look out, but praying to St Anthony, the cat appears at the front door very soon after. And I also pray to him for solutions to troublesome problems. It is my absolute belief and faith that whatever it is I request will be answered. There is no concept of doubt because I truly believe. From the information on St Anthony, I learn that his own saint day is on his birthday, 13th of June, the day before my own birthday. And he joined the Franciscan Friars Order, attracted by the very evangelistical and prayerful life they led, allowing to him to study in simplicity. I cannot stress too much how I have been helped many times, and indeed I probably need to talk to him daily to help me. Thank you to all our contributors to our service this month for sharing their favourite saints with us. What a varied bunch we had. In the opening words of a number of the letters of St Paul, he addresses the Christian community as saints and faithful ones, and he goes on to bless them with the grace of God and the peace of Christ. Paul describes the Christian community as set apart as God's holy ones with a sacred calling, the children of God. As we celebrate All Saints Sunday, we remember those who have lived out their lives of holiness and we're invited to consider our response to that calling to be counted among the saints. Today we give thanks for the extraordinary outpouring of God's grace on human lives, the work of the Holy Spirit transforming the actions of ordinary men and women over the centuries of Christian witness. In the words of a beautiful funerary prayer, we recall those who shine like stars for all eternity. But perhaps more importantly, our celebration invites us to consider how we too might be living witnesses to holiness and bearers of the light of Christ. There was a time when local saints and martyrs were the source of inspiration and legendary stories in the day-to-day -day of humdrum living. They found in their local tales of holy men and women stories of triumph over adversity acts of glorious heroism in the battles against injustice and examples of enacted hope and goodness in the midst of selfishness, greed and the darkness of the world. The saints depicted in the stained glass windows and in the intricate carvings recorded marvellous stories of a better way and a brighter future. But we are all called to be saints and are named so through baptism. So, before we imagine that saintliness and holiness are unattainable to lesser mortals, let me remind you of a few saints with less auspicious beginnings. How about St Gilbert of Sempringham, who began life as a sullen child who neglected his studies and was a disappointment to his father? Or the famous St Francis of Assisi, described as physically unattractive, possessing no particular gifts or capacities in his youth? or St Ignatius of Loyola, who was badly disfigured in battle as a young man, taking a blow from a cannonball the size of his fist. It ended his great dream of being a heroic knight of the realm. 
It is worth pondering that God so often chooses the most unlikely individuals to be the channels of grace and holiness. All of us are the earthen vessels that have the potential to contain the treasures of the kingdom. Gilbert of Sempringham, in a great journey of spiritual conversion, proving his father wrong, went on to be a radical and inclusive educator of girls and boys, both rich and poor, and was the founder of the first and only English religious order in the Middle Ages. St Francis became one of the greatest reformers of his age, and the gift of St Ignatius to the church was his profound writing on prayer in his book, The Spiritual Exercises. All of them faced tough journeys of soul searching in their lives, born of, born of a growing dissatisfaction about the world they encountered. It led to transformation not only of themselves, but the many who pondered their stories and found in them a source of encouragement for their own commitment to Christ. For centuries, the Acts of the Apostles, the Holiness of the Saints and the Blood of the Martyrs fueled the Church with a fervour to follow in their footsteps. It gave them the faith to believe that nothing is impossible for God, that humanity really can rise to the soaring heights of heaven, share in the life of God and make a difference to the world. We inhabit a world full of uncertainty, disappointment, bad behaviour and increasing moral bankruptcy and of course at the moment an uncertainty about our future. When great institutions and those who are meant to be exemplars in society are exposed for all their human frailty and weakness, disillusionment can take hold. But we are a people of hope and it is heartening to know that people still look to holy places and holy people in search for beacons of light and as sources of inspiration and hope. And no matter how dark or uncertain life may be, we as living witnesses to grace and renewal have a powerful message to share. It requires us to be confident and obedient in our calling, keeping our faith, celebrating goodness, drawing alongside the lost and perplexed with the life-giving words about the message and story of Christ. With God, all are welcome. The invitation is to saints and sinners alike. For those of us who have said yes to God's invitation, it falls upon us to step up to that calling and be part of the company of the living saints, a great cloud of witnesses to the way of the Christ. And that means seeking to be ordinary, everyday saints, busy making Christ known, enacting hope, brokering peace, exercising forgiveness, making sacrifices for the sake of the gospel, and demonstrating Christ's radical message of love. We're called to be the saints in our little corner of Suffolk, making a difference through faith in Jesus Christ and by the grace and peace of God. We thank you for joining us today and hope you enjoyed the stories that some of our congregation have shared of their favourite saints and hope you might be challenged to think how you might become a local saint yourself. We will finish our service with our final hymn, I Stand Amazed, but before that, our closing prayer. Go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone, Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.
drops of blood for mine How marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall ever be How marvelous, how wonderful Is my Savior's love sorrows he made them his very own he bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone how marvelous how wonderful and my song shall